Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the Pretend Problems Podcast. I'm Tits McGee. And I'm Kelsey Cook. <laughs> I'll keep doing it. I'll keep saying it. I was trying to think what the Ron Burgundy one went. Ron Bur- Oh, well. <sighs> Should we start over? Uh-uh. Oh, God. Okay. What the Ron Burgundy ones were. Oh, I, I have, I'm Ron I don't, Burgundy? I don't know that movie well enough. Oh, okay. Well. I'm running out of other podcast hosts that I think people would Yeah, there are only seven or eight podcasts. <laughs> I know. As soon as I said that, I was like, I shouldn't be. But. <laughs> yeah, you sure should not be. <laughs> uh, well, did you want to start with our exciting update? Yeah, let's do it. We just, what, a couple hours ago, got back from the doctor because I had my peanut allergy test and I passed. That's I right. have peanut butter, and I'm here talking to you. I'm alive. No reaction whatsoever. Mm-hmm. The girl that cried, I'm allergic to peanuts. <sighs> Don't. That's it's true. real. Is it? You can outgrow. Are you serious right now? You can outgrow it. Oh, I know you can outgrow it. Yeah. I'm just saying, if you can outgrow it, you know, maybe somewhere in between 15 years between allergy tests. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Yeah, I'm sure I didn't outgrow it in the last like two weeks, but right. it's scary. They tell oh, you I, yeah, I it's imagine. going to kill you, so right. you don't walk around going like, well, I wonder if today I'm not. Let me pop a peanut and see. You just go, okay, well, I'm going to avoid it because I'm afraid. No, I, I, I have no idea what that's like because I'm not allergic to anything like that, except bees. Mm-hmm. But that's a little different. Yeah. That's on their time schedule. Yeah. True. I'm not just walking around popping bees. Yeah. Right. Just a, a little peek behind the curtain. Chad and I sometimes after recording, I'm like, wait, did you actually mean that? And he's like, no, because I think you try to be extra like jokey or sassy for the show. But then sometimes it comes off in a way where I'm like, I kind of want to murder you right now. Well, then murder that's me. For, okay, for I'm allergic to murder. For some- that can kill me. That's a real thing. Murder can kill me. For somebody who is allergic to things, I think... Sometimes there are people who genuinely are like, it's made up. Or like they just think you're being dramatic. Right. So. I I don't think think it's made up. So my side of the story is this. Mm -hmm. You explain to me that you can outgrow allergies. Mm -hmm. And then um, when you were not even moved here yet, when you were moving here, you were like, you know what? I should get those retested. (laughs) And then cut to a year and eight months later. That is what I'm referring to. Yeah. No, not having peanut butter, I think, is um, through a couple of seasons, through mm-hmm. Christmas, through Easter especially, has helped me. <laughs> and why through Easter? Because I'm not pounding six packs of giant um, Reese's white chocolate eggs. I get to have Reese's again. Not me. I can't. Because you feel like you don't have self-control with I it? I just thought about them and I can feel myself gaining weight. <laughs> I can feel my fat cells doubling. <laughs> Did your dick twitch? No. <laughs> you think me getting fatter makes my dick twitch? <laughs> it sure doesn't, unless that's part of like diabetes. <laughs> uh, I got I to gotta cut my foot off and my dick twitches now. <laughs> God damn it. Just wagging. Peanut butter. <laughs> yeah. That is um, exciting. I'm I'm very happy for you. I will say I did look into getting my allergies tested when I moved here, and I actually was sent a packet in the mail by an allergist, and I looked into them, and then they did not have very good reviews, and I think that's what stopped me. Mm. And then you know, life just happens. I, I looked into winning the lottery when you moved here, <sighs> and uh, you are so far nothing, but I did look into it. <laughs> oh my god you are really pushing me today i'm not trying to push you i'm just saying like that's a that's a weird that's like going you know for christmas i thought about getting you a new car but then i was like oh, i don't know if you want gas or electric so i just was like forget it here's a here's a box of lifesavers <laughs> i did some thorough research and it just seemed like there weren't allergists in our area that had remotely good ratings and it made me a little nervous i mean i really did like in-depth research and there's a lot of people saying like uh i had a really bad experience this was like way overpriced it wasn't accurate 
And so you, I don't know. I felt like I hit a dead end. Oh, I, I'm like, if, if I were allergic to things, that is the one when I would look at reviews. Yeah. That's the one I would really be into. Yeah. Because it's like, if they go, hey, you're not allergic to peanuts anymore. Yeah. And then you come home and have peanuts and you're like, oh, I guess I am a yeah, yeah, exactly. No, I so it. I just, you're making it seem like I didn't try hard enough. I think you tried the exact right amount. Okay. Here we are. Mm -hmm. Today, you had a spoonful of peanut butter mm -hmm. and nothing happened. Yeah. I'm jacked up. I'm jacked up too. Good. Yeah. <laughs> well, this is kind of the thing we talked about yesterday, right? Where you go, I'm all, can we talk about this? Sure. You're like, I'm always in a good mood. And I was like, no, you're not. I go, always? And so... There's just sometimes when you're talking, I'm like, well, if we talk about this logically, then, I mean, we just are where we are. Okay. Can I give some backstory? Please. Do whatever you need to do. So when I came home yesterday, <clears throat> I am, I think, almost done now with, I had like a quick little head cold. I didn't get very good sleep, didn't feel very good. Mm -hmm. Went to... Um, a different appointment because I'm in the process of getting a, a tongue tie release. That's a whole other thing. We'll get into that different episode, but don't have time for that today. So anyway, just the process of getting a, a tongue tie release is like, you know, there's like stitches in your mouth. It's a whole thing. Um, I was telling Chad, I have to do these exercises leading up to it. And just, you know, it's like kind of an ordeal. And mm -hmm. I said, but you know what? Like, even though all of that happened this morning, I'm in like a really good mood. On the drive back, it's like, it's so nice out. Mm -hmm. I just like, man, I'm feeling really happy. I was like, you know what? I'm always in a good mood. And I said it kind of like in this way, it, like you and I joke with each other and you'll, I, it felt like I was doing an impression of you because you'll be like, you know what? And then you'll like <laughs> say something very kind of like playful sure. and to be funny. Sure. And so I said that to you, like, you know what? I'm always in a good mood. Of course, I'm not every day of my life in a good mood mm -hmm. i think i was speaking more to yeah. like you're being hyperbolic i was being hyperbolic yeah. and i was speaking more to even when hard shit is going on in my life i feel like i'm able to be pretty glass half full a lot of the time mm -hmm. and i've been told that by people in my life over and over and over especially with mom stuff they're like i don't know how you are like even doing anything when you have all this mom stuff going on right. all the time yeah so I think I'm I think I'm a positive person and I think for the most part if I'm not in a good mood I'm sad. I'm not just like cranky. You know what I mean? Right. And so that's like what I was referring to. And I, I agree with every single thing you just said after the words I'm always in a good mood. The whole explanation yeah. I 1000% agree with. Mm -hmm. So that's why to me the phrase I'm always in a good mood is not true. And so I said, always? <laughs> you know what else you said? Oh, yeah. I also said, who told you that? Your therapist? <laughs> because that seems like something a therapist might say if they are being cheerleady. And when you're giving them bad news and you're like, holy shit. You know what I've noticed about you? Even when you're struggling and you give me these bad news updates, you're always in a good mood. Mm-hmm. And so that's what I would, that's what I would think. So I was just trying to get to the correct word and level of what was actually happening. And I will tell you, maybe just a fraction, a tiny fraction. We also talk about my mood a lot. Mm -hmm. And when you go, you know what? I'm always in a good mood. Mm -hmm. It sounds a little like you're saying, you know what? I'm the one that keeps this fucking relationship afloat. Because you go on your sassy bad moods mm -hmm. all willy-nilly whenever it fits you, mm -hmm. right? Now, you didn't say any of that stuff either. Nope. So that also is inaccurate. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So then we just got into a little bit. And what, what I thought was fairly ironic is that this conversation then put you in a bad mood. Yeah. Making your phrase of I'm always in a good mood False. Now, that's not what I was going for. Let me be clear. 
I was not going like, I'm always in a good mood. And you're like, fucking gauntlet set, challenge accepted. That's not what I was thinking. I wasn't like, I'm about to show her mm -hmm. always is not the right word here. That's not what mm -hmm. I was trying to do. Mm -hmm. I was just trying to get into a conversation. That was a really fun conversation. Yeah, it seemed to be pretty great. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yesterday. Mm -hmm. But here we are now recording a podcast. <laughs> I just... <laughs> I just felt like that was important to share the peek behind the curtain that the response to me being like, I'm always in a good mood, just in total, like, I am I am in a good mood as I'm saying that. I'm like being playful. I'm trying to have fun. And his response is, oh, should therapists say that? It just immediately, right. yeah. you you just immediately feel attacked where you're like, what the fuck, man? Like, what <laughs> what are you doing right now? Like, I'm, I'm. Why, why would you say that? Well, I was also trying to be jokey about it and clearly missing the mark. Clearly missing the mark. I think if I were to say, you know what? I'm always in a good mood. There'd be a lot of, huh. You would never say that. Really? You would never say that, though. I might say that. Why? <laughs> oh, personal attack alert. Oh, my God. <laughs> <sighs> well, that's not a good noise. <laughs> I'm exhausted. <laughs> what do you mean you're exhausted? You're just sitting here having a conversation. I know. I just mean that whole thing yesterday was like, ugh. The, none of that needed to happen. That's but, true. You know? You know, okay. we say that a lot in this relationship. Like, none of that needed to happen. But really, are you sure? <laughs> like, I'd like to know, does she really think she's always in a good mood? Because that's not right. And okay. so... If you say like that didn't need to happen, it's like now we both are on the same page and we know that you don't actually think that. Because if you actually thought that, then I would be concerned. Right. I guess I thought you knew me well enough and like knew the like kind of jokey, playful tone I was using with you to know that I, of course, I'm like, I think that's like a crazy thing to say. I'm always in a good mood. I like, do too. And, and, that's, and that's why I questioned oh. it i also think it's great and i by the way you didn't say it that jokingly oh hmm, okay i mean it could have been like if you're playing the straight man sure yeah that's how you would have said it and it's and then the people at home are like oh shit yeah right yeah but um but i don't know i didn't know if you really were like you know what yeah guess what motherfucker yeah i am rainbows and puppy dogs <laughs> I think I am for the most part. I think I'm I a think big, you are too. I think I'm a morning person. And I think that in and of itself, like compared to most of society, the fact that every morning I wake up, I'm like, good morning. I know. It is such a difference. You're just like, hey, good morning. Let's open the curtains. Let's get some sunshine in here. And I'm just like, fuck, I woke up. Oh, I was hoping to go peacefully in my sleep. And here I am for another <laughs> fucking day of this. <laughs> I tell him this is how like... <laughs> puppy dog romantic I am with him I'm like even when I sleep then I like I missed you <laughs> and so then when I wake up and you're there I'm like oh it's you <laughs> and he's like <laughs> that's not true no, I I'm, don't shit on that I'm like just doing the impression of what you just okay, did okay I'm just saying that's not how I react to it no I know okay. but I'm saying that like I am I, I'm still like <gasps> It's you. Good morning. Well, Happy. I'm, st I'm still like that too, but I'm just like, it's morning. And all of a sudden my brain is like, what are you doing today? What do you have going on today? What's going on today? Don't forget this. Got to do this. You have 14 alarms set on your phone. Guess fucking figure them out because you didn't use the memo line. Here we go. Let's try it. It's Wednesday. Oh no. Mm -hmm. It's a lot. Yeah. I so. know. I don't want that for you. Well, it just is. I mean, that's just uh, how it is. Yeah. I also don't have caffeine because of my gut issues and I think that does help me to not have that where like that feeling of oh I gotta have coffee before I can be a person right I don't think I ever am like I wouldn't you know I'm when I see a t-shirt that says don't even talk to me until I've had my coffee mm -hmm. I want to push the person off a bridge into water <laughs> and being like why don't you steep for a little bit <laughs> So I, I I'm not steep for a little bit. I'm though. not like That's that. Funny. I'm just, um, it's just right when I get up. Yeah. It's, 
it picture black friday mm -hmm. outside of a walmart that's what it feels like there's been this line forever and then all of a sudden me waking up is the manager unlocking the door and it's just like what the fuck <laughs> tvs are four dollars <laughs> and it's just like that's why when i get up to pee i have to count backwards from 50 so nothing else can get in there i just go 50 49 and i walk to the bathroom and i count back from 50 and then i lay back down probably around 14 15 and then i um i g try to go back to bed and that's how i go back to bed because it is a black friday situation oh my god they're just waiting they're just waiting and they're so nonsensical it's you know shit that i don't need to um Wonder if anybody by the cabin's gonna have a fish fry on Labor Day. By the way, it's not even fucking Memorial Day yet. And I'm like, when are somebody gonna have a fish fry? Yeah, just like random shit like that. Whoa. And then everything I dreamt about is like, I don't know, could that be real? Could that, maybe your brain put it together at night and then that's the thing. It's like, okay, Jesus Christ. Jesus Cristo. Jesus Cristo. I'm so sorry. That sounds awful. No, it's not so bad. But it's just like, <laughs> it's just like. <laughs> It's just like, that's why I, when I wake up, I'm not like, hey, buttercup. I'm just trying to let everything sa mm. saturate and, and, yeah. and get in and, and settle. Yeah. And then, coffee or no coffee, yeah. I think I'm a fucking delight and always in a good mood. <laughs> <clears throat> She's been doing this meditation. <laughs> For quite a while, and she does it every day, mm -hmm. and uh, I like to put it to the test. Mm -hmm. That's what I do. I'm a tester, mm -hmm. right? I'm a pop quiz hot shot. That's from Speed. Mm. Have you seen Speed? I doubt it. Is that one where the bus goes crazy? Yeah. Mm, haven't seen it. Yeah, yeah I figured. Uh, anyway, the moral of all of this is that I can have peanut butter, yes. and this is really exciting. When I okay, so I showed up. They were like, "Did you bring your peanuts?" And I was like. Oh, fuck. I forgot that that was <laughs> the main part of this whole test was that we agreed that I would bring, I would supply the peanuts. I would potentially load the gun for my own death yeah. uh, if I were actually still deathly allergic to it. And they were like, okay, it's all right. Let's go see what we have. And they went back into their like staff kitchen, found some peanut butter. And it was like the good peanut butter. It was like the expensive wasn't like the gif it was like oh my god here we go it was like good shit anyway it's all good shit and peanut put, butter is fucking awesome yeah they put some on a spoon and i had just a tiny little bit at first and then she's talking to me and i'm just telling myself like don't think about what's happening just, mm -hmm. just stay focused on what she's talking about don't freak yourself out and then i was fine and i had a little bit more and had a little bit more and by the end of it i had the entire spoon full and i <laughs> turned to chad and i was like oh peanut butter so much better than almond butter <laughs> <laughs> which is like the basis of one of your jokes which i mean i won't spoil because well, it's I don't care. special but basically the things that i haven't been able to have for a really long time i have had the substitute versions of them and i've tried to convince chad that they're just as good so like dairy-free ice cream and almond butter and all this stuff and chad has continued to be like these aren't good. They're only good to you because you haven't had the real version in so long that your yeah. tongue doesn't even remember what good tastes like. Yeah, it's like I can have every single food. Yeah. I don't need frozen coconut water. It <laughs> fucking sucks. Yeah, and sometimes almond butter to me tastes like what I remembered peanut butter tasting like. And so oh it's like, my god! And so it's like, oh, you know what? Now when fine. you when you bring things up, when you go, remember when you said this? I'm gonna be like, mm mm, <laughs> no, that's not how your brain works. You don't remember things correctly because you think almond butter tastes like fucking peanut butter. Just a spoonful of peanut butter makes the relationship alive. <laughs> It's too, it's too much that you, that's how you remember it. Maybe it was like you had yeah. to remember it that way, yeah. right? Maybe it's like someone else going like, oh yeah, I remember, uh, yeah, no, my dad never, never hit me. <laughs> Just suppressed. That's how I have to remember this yeah. to make my adulthood okay. Yeah, I suppressed peanut butter memories. Yeah, you absolutely did. <sighs> but I'm glad you're alive. And mm -hmm. I was watching your throat while you were talking because mm -hmm. I went online and I was like, signs for anaphylactic shock and it's Aww, it's swallowing a bunch 
Oh. It's like in a row mm. because your throat starts to swell. And so what your body without knowing it starts to starts to swallow and try to keep it moving and a lot and open. <sighs> so that's what I was watching for. Thank you. And thank you for not telling me beforehand. I would never tell you beforehand. Sometimes I tell you stuff and you go, oh, well, that scares me. And then I go, well, fuck. <laughs> Shouldn't have told her that. He told me about deer ticks and how small they are and that you can just get them through walking through grass. And I was like, well, you got to check my scalp now. And I could feel you be like, why did I even tell her this? I, yeah, a, I, a little, not nothing crazy. But th when you said, well, I thought, I thought wood ticks were on trees. Yeah. That's when I almost, um, just stopped, <laughs> broke the window, grabbed a shard of glass and slit my throat. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Jeez. That's so aggressive. I know. Why? <laughs> Cause I didn't know. I'm teasing. Oh. Um, but yeah, when, when you were like, wait a second, you can get them from grass. I'm like, where the fuck? Did you live Earth? I I was told that they like dropped on you and you're walking through trees. That they like dropped on your scalp. Hmm. Yeah, they normally get on your ankles when you're walking through grass and then crawl up. Mm. I would imagine they can drop down, mm -hmm. Mission Impossible style. Yeah. Your mission is to drop down onto this blonde scalp and suck the blood out of her brain <laughs> if you choose to accept it. Yeah. But yeah, they can get them from everywhere. So from now on, um, before I start talking, I'm going to think it through. And I'm just going to be like, does, <clears throat> does she need to know this? Is this going to affect her negatively if I don't tell her? And if the answer is no, fucking zip. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, thanks. It's Thank you pleasure. for being there with me today. It's my pleasure. I'm glad it worked out. It was really, really nice to have Chad there. Was so. it? Yes. <laughs> That's nice. I mean, now talking about it after, we got a little spicy at the beginning of this episode. I love it. I love ironing it out in front of the people. Yeah. I have my own stuff of people. Like People just do say shitty things to you when you have allergies. They just make you feel like you're a diva. They're sure. like, ugh. It was probably not even, it's like, why would I choose? I don't want this stuff. Right. You know what I mean? So there are actually people who make you feel like you're just being dramatic. And that's very, very frustrating. And so I, I think you like sure. jokingly, mm -hmm. that's why I was like, okay, is this one of those things where you're just joking to be funny for the podcast or to like, do you actually feel that way? Well, I think that not having peanut butter for me has probably helped me lose 20 pounds <laughs> since we started living together. I'm not kidding. Yeah. And so... Um, that's good because I read, you know, peanut butter toast and when you have jelly on it in the morning, it activates your sugar cravings. It's in the crave sugar instead of, so I'd have an omelet and a piece of peanut butter and jelly toast. Mm -hmm. But if you just have an omelet, then your sugar cravings aren't activated. Mm. And so that, um, you know, that helped me. So anyways, yeah. in the doctor office today, I told you, get ready for me to be 225 <laughs> now that I know you can have peanut butter and it's not going to kill you. Well, get ready for me to be 225. Oh, my God. It's going to sound so gross when we're having sex. <laughs> we tweedle chub and tweedle chubber. It's going to be, you know, when you watch a cartoon and they put suction cumps on their hands and feet to walk up a building. That's going to be our belly buttons smushing together. I can't wait. Our wide, deep belly buttons. I can't wait either. I've been fucking waiting. Yeah. I mean, I told Chad as soon as we got home, I was like, I can't wait to make the next batch of brownies I make and like lace them with peanut butter. Yeah. <sighs> Everything's going to taste so much better now. Yeah. Yeah, it sure is. Welcome back to normal food. <laughs> Thank you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, side note, we don't need to get into it, but if any of you have ever had SIBO, can you write in pretendproblemspodcast at gmail.com because mm -hmm. my doctor is wondering if that's what I have, like that that's like my IBS stuff. It's like um, an overgrowth of bad bacteria in your Secondary, small intestine. Small intestinal bacterial overgrowth. SIBO. I'm going to start calling you. I'm going to start calling you SIBO. What's up, SIBO? Oh, that's such a gross nickname. Yeah, but people aren't going to know. I'm going to name, I'm going to name, if I ever buy a yacht, I'm going to name it SIBO, S-E-A-BO. And then I'm just going to make sure that shit flows out of the back of it. So there's a trail <laughs> of shit. 
That's like such a gross nickname. Like, what's up, Pepsi? <laughs> you live in C. Diff? <laughs> Nobody wants their nickname to be a medical problem with their butthole. That's true. But anyway, if any of you have dealt with it, can you write in? I'm about to start antibiotics for two weeks. If it solves all my poop issues and I can have peanut butter. <sighs> say bon I'm going bon bon <laughs> bueno. bueno. <clears throat> to run for president. Are you? Yeah. Okay. I won't. But. Hey, everybody. You better crank that AC. It's air conditioning. Because things are heating up at DraftKings Casino. The excitement is endless. That means there's no end to it. I like to help people out. The vibes are right, and the cash prizes could be huge. Play hundreds of games all summer long. Dive into a casino classic or blast off with DraftKings exclusive Rocket. Uh, New players, start by playing just five bucks and get 50 bucks in casino credits and that's in your pocket instantly. All you got to do is download DraftKings Casino app and sign up with code PRETEND. Mm-hmm. You'll be soaking up the fun in no time. The crown is yours. I had to try and do it like Chad. Yoge. Yoge. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER or in West Virginia, visit www.1800gambler.net. In Connecticut, help is available for problems gambling. Call 888-789-7777 or visit ccpg.org. Please play responsibly. 21 plus, physically present in Connecticut, Michigan, New Jersey, Pennsylvania, West Virginia only. Void in Ontario, one per opted in new customer. $5 in wagers required, max $50 in non-withdrawable casino credits that expire in 168 hours. See casino.draftkings.com slash get 50 for eligibility, terms, and responsible gaming resources. Yoge. Yoge. Back to the show. Should we talk about that we both haven't had alcohol for a long time now? April 8th for me, April 6th for you. Mm-hmm. So we're coming up on, well, we're like a month and a half right yeah, now. Yeah, probably. Yeah. So when we went to the Justin Timberlake concert, we were both sober and... Mm-hmm. I don't think I've ever, like in my adult life, been to a concert completely sober. I feel like I've always had at least a couple drinks. Yeah. And it was so fun. I mean, I wouldn't have... I great. didn't think that I was sober one time because I you're so jacked up. It's like, yeah. why even would you need alcohol at a concert where you're already getting so much adrenaline? Yeah. And what I liked is then when the parking lot is like everyone's making a run for the front, mm-hmm. you can make... You know, some moves with mm-hmm. confidence. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because um, you're sober yeah. and not drinking. And I love, I will tell you, I love sleeping. Mm-hmm. I love getting into deep sleep when I can. Mm-hmm. And uh, alcohol always um, prohibits that. Mm-hmm. And I also love waking up without a headache, without, yeah. you know, just feeling like dog shit yeah. for a couple of days. Anxiety. Yeah. Yeah, I finally listened to the Huberman Labs podcast episode about the effects of alcohol. And I'd been putting it off for a long time because I heard it was so popular. And I was like, I think it's gonna be one of those things that once I hear it, I can't unknow it. Ignorance is bliss. And man, I mean, Chad and I have been not drinking, not as a, hey, I think we're gonna be sober for the rest of our lives, but just... I think just wanting to feel good. Yeah, feel a little better. Yeah. Yeah, minus court orders. <laughs> but otherwise, it's fine. Otherwise, totally a personal choice. And we just, I don't know. Hearing what it does to your brain, hearing what it does to your body, it really, like the older I get, I know that this is something people talk about all the time, that your hangovers are just so bad even if you have just a couple of drinks, like I really can feel it the next day. And so sometimes I'm like, okay, what is worth it? Like that one hour of feeling extra fun and giggly sure. to have your whole next day. Not, I don't know. This is not a, this is not a shame episode. If you drink, drink oh, them yeah. up. If you got them, drink them up. Oh yeah. We don't, we don't care. But I just, I do feel a lot better. Yeah. So that was interesting. And I was, I was happy to have you there with me. It's like more the pre-show even than the concert where everybody's walking around, has a drink in your yeah. hand, in their hand, and you're like, oh. I didn't even know they made White Claws that big. God damn. <laughs> like yeah. two people are carrying it together because it's so heavy. Yeah. Like, well, I wouldn't mind one of those. Yeah. But yeah, it was good. 
I, I enjoyed it. I did too. And then we also thought we would follow up on how last episode we were talking about not having kids together and stuff like that. And I forgot to say that you and I had an interesting conversation after we left seeing my nieces that or our nieces. You like when I say our nieces or my I nieces? I get it. You say whatever you want to say, but I like I like You like our nieces? Yeah. Okay. So I feel like every time I'm around kids, there's some caveman instinct in me that wants Chad to think I'm good with kids. Cave woman. Cave woman. <laughs> comedian, not comedian. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why that makes me laugh so much. It's so dumb. I hate that shit. I know, me too. So even though I know we're not gonna have kids together, it's mm -hmm. like I just still want to know that if circumstances were different, that you would would want one with me. Gotcha. That you would think I would make a good mom. Sure. Right. Sure. And but you like never really you never really say anything to me about the way I am with our nieces. True. And every time I leave our interactions, I always feel a little, I don't know, just like, oh, I, I, he must not think that I'm good with kids because he doesn't ever say anything to me about it. And I'm always telling him how good he is with our nieces and how good he is with his own kids. But he doesn't ever say anything to me. Right. And it's made me feel like, oh, God, is, I mean maybe I'm not good with kids, maybe. So what did you say? Well, the reason I don't give you compliments is because I don't want uh, to like gas you up mm -hmm. about it and get you excited to have kids. Yeah. Um, and I understand how that would be frustrating not hearing the compliments, mm -hmm. but I also <laughs> don't want to... Uh, be like this encouraging force where you're like, mm -hmm. well, shit, maybe I should, maybe I should give up everything and free time and fun and sleep and mm -hmm. for this. So, yeah. But you did end up saying then, then you did end up complimenting me. Yeah. Now that you know, now that you know the reasoning. Yeah. So that was nice to hear that you actually do think I'm great with kids and that it makes, does it make you want to have? Babies with me when you see me with our nieces? It ma I, I get baby fever very easily. Yeah. It makes me, um, yeah, I mean, it makes me like wish we could have met before. Yeah. But again, I just don't think like it's it's fair to a kid. Like these these old, old ass dudes. Yeah, like, the Robert uh, De Niro's. Uh, yeah, and Al Pacino. They're having kids in their early, like late 70s, I don't know, maybe early 80s. I don't know. If but that's old, but. that's basically like going, hey, you're going to have a dad for three years. Yeah. That's not fun or fair. Or yeah. Anything. And I know not. I'm not to that point, but it's just, who yeah. knows, you know? Yeah. Anyway, I just, that to me was a really interesting conversation to have because I had no idea that you actually had been feeling positively about it, but you just didn't want to keep going, oh, you're so good with kids. Blah, right. blah, blah. Right. Yeah, that's what I was avoiding, where it's yeah. like, holy shit, you'd make such a great mom. Well, maybe we should be one. Ah, fuck. <laughs> yeah, so instead, that's kind of your, I mean, I think a lot of that can go back to the, I'm having fun, are you having fun? Sometimes you have, I mean, that was a little bit of a different situation of having walls up, but like your friend being like, hey man, are we friends? Is that you can really keep things to yourself, but it's not necessarily with like a bad intention it's you're sometimes trying to protect people mm -hmm. but it can be taken as that you're being cold sure. when you don't mean to be but i mean that's happened a couple times with my mom too where we'd like leave my mom's after visiting and you'd be very kind of like buttoned up and not really saying much about it or about how i am with her and i'd be like yeah hey, maybe like this just doesn't really affect him much and then i asked you about it at one point and you're like well i'm trying not to cry oh yeah so I was like, oh, okay. So it's like the polar opposite right. of what I thought. I just... And let it be known, I can be cold. Sometimes when I'm cold, I mean it. If you see me on the streets, I have a rep. He's very sweet. Um, <laughs> Sh <yeah. laughs> should, we do our, uh, should we do our middle segment? Yeah. Because we are already... 34 minutes. Let's How skip it. Let's get, to, let's get to questions. questions. Okay, Let's great. get to questions. People we're, know our dates. We're skipping it. People know where we're going to be. 
If not, you can go to KelseyCook.com or ChadDaniels.com. Yeah. The ones that are coming up are Kansas City for me and then the Burt Tour and then Raleigh and Charlotte in July. So do you want to say your June and July at least? Nope. I stand by. <laughs> oh go to ChadDaniels.com slash tour. All right. All Please. right. Please. Please. Okay. So we got... I got some new jokes that are fucking tight. Yeah. I got to see them in Austin and holy shit. They're so good. Can we, we'll tackle one really quickly that's actually about Austin. Okay. This question is titled Middle Act Austin, Texas, question mark. Chad, your show in Austin was great, but who was your middle act? I know his name is Dylan and he mentioned he was gay, but if you Google gay comedian Dylan, all I got was Tim Dylan. (laughs) He's great too, but who was your guy? By the way, huge fan of the podcast. I hope you can help. And as a side note, the Saturday seven o'clock show crowd was a little rough starting out. I love how you were able to turn them around by the end of the show. I'm from Houston and personally, I feel like we treated you way better a couple months ago. Great podcast. Kelsey, you're great too. My wife said, no way y'all read this please help me out (laughs) well we helped you out man there you go first of all houston at the improv that show was lights out man that was so much fun it was on a thursday and people were just jacked up the friday early show and saturday or the saturday early show it said right Mm -hmm. yeah that was interesting because people are drinking all day in austin and they come in from excitement and loud music and just sunshine now you're in a dark colder room and people tend to get tired in that situation so i agree you know for me they weren't on board right away but it was fun using little comedy tricks to turn them like little psychological things to turn them yeah and it ended up being very very fun so to answer your question first of all cj landry was the opener um, the, the first one, the host, yep. and he, uh, so fun, such a fantastic week. Yeah. Um, really enjoyed him both on and off stage. Same with Dylan. Um, yeah. Dylan, I had seen the first time I ever went to mothership. I just did a couple of sets in the smaller room and thought he was so funny and fantastic that when they said, Hey, how would you feel about him? Um, being the feature for you? I was like, absolutely. Let's do it. So it's Dylan Sullivan is his name. Mm-hmm. And uh, if you look him up on on Instagram, super great, super funny, really, really nice kid. I mean, I call him a kid, but really nice man off stage. Mm-hmm. Um, I only call him a kid because I'm old and has nothing to do with him. <laughs> and uh, yeah, just I had a ton of fun. And it always makes the week better when you are with fun comedians, both on and off stage. And And I could not say, I can't say enough good things about both of those guys. For sure. Yeah. Okay, this next one is titled ADHD and Stuffs. Hey, y'all. Or I guess, hey, all. I, I carried the y'all over from the previous email. I'm sorry. Uh, first long caller, timeless emailer. I have been listening to Middle of Somewhere weekly since the single digit episodes. Ah, uh, woo. Moose in the morning, lol. <laughs> I was also a self-helpless casual listener after finding the podcast through a recommendation from another podcast. I can't remember which one. Hoping that either one of you comes to Fargo soon so I can get a chance to see you live. I got an ADHD diagnosis late in life, 34 years old, about a year ago. Honestly, it is one of the best things to happen to me. I was prescribed some medication and after some dosage adjustments, it has made a massive improvement to my day-to-day life. Things that once seemed impossible or excruciatingly difficult are now much more manageable. I have found that the medication combined with tips and tricks that I have read helps so much. Everything from social anxiety issues to normal daily tasks seems so much more doable. A question for both of you is, do you ever suffer from imposter syndrome? And if so, how do you handle it? I have found myself in a leadership position at work where I am the one that people often come to with problems Mm. or questions. My manager and previous supervisors have given me nothing nothing but positive feedback, so objectively I feel like I am performing well, but I can't help but feel like I am faking it all. When someone comes to me for advice or input, my gut reaction is, I don't know, go ask an adult. (laughs) But in reality, I am that adult. Thank you for any input. Sorry for the lengthy email. Feel free to use my name and keep on keeping on with the awesome content, David. Thank you, David. Uh, And that's not even a lengthy email. You're fine. Um, I'd like to start at Fargo, one of my favorite places to play. I grew up an hour away from there, so I try to go there every year. Unfortunately, I had to skip this February because I was uh, getting ready for something, And mm-hmm. uh, but I will be back. Mm-hmm. I'll be back, and I recommend Fargo to her as much as I can. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I'll figure out a venue and try to go. So it's so funny that you write in asking about this because Chad and I were just talking about imposter syndrome through a TikTok that I showed him mm-hmm. about how often... 
ADHD and imposter syndrome can go hand in hand because the video I saw was a psychologist saying that if you have experienced ADHD symptoms from a young age, that some of the messaging you've been given, whether directly or indirectly, is like, why can't you do the things that other people are capable of doing more easily, right? Like, why are you so much? Why are you not enough? Whatever. And it can create this feeling early on of, oh, like, I'm not good enough. And it can create self-confidence issues, imposter syndrome, and all that stuff. So I was talking about that with Chad because I don't ever really see him struggle with imposter syndrome in work. But I was like, oh, that's so interesting because I feel like you've really struggled with imposter syndrome in our relationship. Right. Like when you say, uh, David, when you're like, go ask an adult, um, when I look at her, I always think like, oh, where's your hot boyfriend? And um, so I do have a little bit of that with this. This is where for me, this ADHD uh, stuff starts to feel a little horoscopy. Where it's like mm. you pick what fits you and you're like, holy shit. And the mm -hmm. stuff that doesn't fit you, you kind of just let it go. Mm. But um, so when you're saying you struggle with day-to-day -day tasks, I don't think I do. Mm -hmm. I mean, someone living with me, maybe you could correct me, but mm -hmm. I don't think I struggle with day-to-day -day tasks. And that's what makes me think maybe it's not this for me. Mm -hmm. um, I, don't have a tr I don't have trouble concentrating. When I need to concentrate, I can, I can go get it. I can find it the concentration. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes just stuff is fucking boring to me, right? It's like, so then I don't concentrate on it. Um, Can I say something really quick? Yeah, of course. That is like exactly what I've read about ADHD though. That like if it's something that interests you, people with ADHD have not only no problem focusing on it, they focus really well. They can like focus the most. But what I'm saying is if there's stuff I don't like yeah. I, and I have to get it done, I can find the concentration oh, for Oh, I thought you were saying that when it's boring, then you don't well, concentrate. Well, I mean, if or it's, like it takes if, a long time if to it's it. boring and I don't need to deal with it, yeah. I mean, it's to me, it's it's not that I'm not concentrating. It's, it's, oh, it's a waste of my time. Right. I don't want to read an article that I'm going to have zero use for. Mm -hmm. um, if it is something I need to get done, mm -hmm. like I fucking hate listening to my sets in the morning. Yeah. But I do it because it helps me be yeah. better. Yeah. And so, um, and I, and I really do focus in, I hear every word cause that's how yeah. I write my tags and stuff like that. So, um, that's a little, when I start to question it a little bit, um, I do know yeah. there are some things that are spot on, right. Mm -hmm. Um, but I just wonder if it's like piecemealing something else together. Um, Maybe. I can't imagine having trouble with day-to-day -day tasks that would I would drive me insane and I understand why getting your dosage right has helped a ton. Yeah. And we've, you know, I've talked about that, that I agree of, of the umbrella of ADHD symptoms. I do feel like that is one of the ones that I see very little of, if at all with you. I mean, we were just talking about that where I was like, yeah, I mean, you like, you are a doer, like you do stuff, you yeah. run errands, you do projects, you do tasks, you get your work done. Even like listening to your own set as a comic for I think almost every comic mm -hmm. is truly like we fucking hate it. And you do sit down and do the things you need to do. So yeah. And, and that's why that, that's why it's hard for me because the AD is attention deficit and I just don't feel like I can't concentrate. I know. Then the other end is the hyperactivity, which is when you describe waking up to pee and that you have to count back from 50 to not let your brain become hyperactive that's what I don't understand is like I don't know enough about ADHD to know does that mean that that's what that is or is it anxiety is it a mood disorder is it a little bit of both I, d I don't know I hope it's a mood it. disorder well, I don't think you're bipolar I don't think I am I think I'm Amy Polar <laughs> hi I'm Amy Fuller. I'm Amy Fuller. <laughs> oh, that would be a good one. Of Podcast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I don't know. Um, but did you give your update that you have a an appointment for an ev evaluation? No, I, you have an appointment for an evaluation. Yay. And uh, but I'll, and it's know, not like in a year. Obviously, it's I'm going to keep I'm going to keep everyone posted, but it's yeah. just not here yet. So yeah. So, how do you deal with your imposter syndrome, at least in the relationship? 
Um, I've just tried to, you know, listen to what you say and try to take most of your actions in. And, um, you know, also, I think that I've tried, uh, you know, you always go like, you need to love yourself. Mm -hmm. And there are times where I really turn it up. Like way to the nth degree just to be silly. Mm -hmm. But I have tried. I've, you know, think about the things I've done and things I'm good at and blah, blah, blah and stuff like that. And so I've, I'm trying my hardest. And yeah. I, and I, I, you know, I think I'm there. And I will tell you that like knowing how I treat people and knowing that I am willing to do, you know, whatever. I think I'm, you know, a bit of a catch. Mm -hmm. Even though I'm a little long in the tooth, I think that uh, every time you say that, it's such a funny phrase. Well, that's what it's it is. somebody that who's long in the tooth would say. Yeah, I know. It just makes me think of like an old shelter dog that's just like grizzled and. <laughs> has long Why don't you teeth. get off my lawn? <laughs> Look at me, get off my lawn. <laughs> yeah, so that that's how that's how I deal with it. You just have to because. You know, I think, first of all, you didn't just show up to work, David, and be like, guess, guys, I'm the manager now. Mm -hmm. Someone assigned you that because of your work. And so that's kind of how I deal with it in the relationship. I go, well, I didn't just show up. She's not my prisoner. Yeah. She is here voluntarily. And so that's what I have to remember. And I think you have to remember that someone assigned you your job. And so mm -hmm. you do deserve to be there. Yeah, I think one of the most compelling things I've heard about overcoming imposter syndrome, especially in work, is like if you weren't meant to be there, if you weren't ready to be there, you just wouldn't be, which is essentially what Chad is saying. Like you just wouldn't be in that position if you weren't able to do it. So um, I don't know. I, I know that like positive affirmations really help me if you can go through and maybe write a list of the things that you know you're good at at your job and I don't know. Maybe that's... And if you helpful. can't come up with a list, David, maybe it's time to step down. <laughs> you fucking imposter. <laughs> don't listen to the chat. Well, listen to me. Just know it's a joke. I'm like... Yes. Oh. Hmm. What's the next one? <laughs> cat pee problem. I can see that. Yes. This is titled Cat Pee Problem. They say, Hi, Chad and Kelsey. I had the same problem with my cat when I went back to work after a period of being unemployed again and when I got pregnant. I tried all of the things that you did, the, the extra litter box, the feel away diffusers and collars, and taking her to the vet to check for medical issues. It was absolutely infuriating and I thought I was going to lose my mind. We ended up starting her on a very low dose of fluoxetine for anxiety and it got so much better. She seemed happier and more relaxed, and most importantly, the peen stopped. No blood work or monitoring was required besides her yearly vet appointments. I've actually been able to wean her off of it and only use it if I, if needed, um, if I notice it starts to become a problem again. I know it's not ideal to start your pets on meds, but in this case, it saved my sanity and my house. Also, the greenies pill pockets are the way to go when giving them pills. I hope this helps. Uh, fluoxetine? Fluoxetine. I already ordered it with my mind. <laughs> As Mia comes in, Mia is not the peer. Nope, she's not the peer. It's uh, it's old Bing Bing. <laughs> um, I, well, I I thank you for that. By the way, I want to know that you've weaned her off, and then you start again when you notice it's a problem. Does the problem you notice is that peeing again? That's a question I have. For yeah, you. I think. Like what? How do you know there's a problem again? Maybe she's just a little skittish or something. I don't know, but. I don't know. Hey, are you making biscuits? They say, P.S. Love the podcast and especially love seeing the pets so involved. I would love if you guys did a formal introduction of all the pets on the pod. We can totally do that. My husband is allergic to our cats and reacts to them just like Chad does, but they still choose to crawl all over him. We laugh at Chad's facial expressions every time the cat starts climbing on him. <laughs> this is funny that we're reading this email as Mia. Mia's usually on the podcast the whole episode, but she right. was sleeping, so she just came in. We laugh at Chad's facial expressions every time the cat starts climbing on him. The Purina Live Clear food has been a game changer for my husband, and I hope it works for you guys. That's what we are feeding them now. Yeah, it, it, so I've noticed my allergies have come back uh, with a head of steam. Mm. And I wonder if that's what maybe also is affecting my sleep because I saw a picture of myself before I moved in with Kelsey and these cats and I look about 20 years younger. So I don't know what's happening. I need to get something you're very allergic to. So we start aging at the same pace because mm. otherwise we're just going to get a lot more like cool. You have a podcast with your dad comments. 
would you ever consider a, an allergy pill? No. Not like I want. Okay. No. Okay. Don't like any possible side effects. Uh, yeah, I'm just not like, uh, I'm just waiting it out. Okay. Well. Just waiting it out. Wait till you see me reversing, like reverse aging. So when you say waiting it out, do you mean for them to die? Well, I don't, uh, not now. I don't mean it that, the way your face looks. <laughs> no. I'm not, I'm not waiting for them to die. I am. I do find it interesting that, I don't know if you know this about cats, but they, she said making biscuits. It's when they push on stuff because they, it reminds them of getting milk from their mother and uh, they push on my stomach all the time and it immediately makes me furious. And then I'll f like do half a sit up and flex my stomach and they keep pushing because they're like, oh, not yet there, buddy. And they just keep pushing. I'm like, fuck. That's a great like body fat percentage test. Oh. Is will the cat continue <laughs> to make biscuits on your stomach when you're fully flexed? And they make biscuits on my stomach and you tell me I'm in great shape. You are in great shape. Oh. What else do we have? That's it. That's it? I think we should stop there for now because we are at 50 minutes. We still have to do an ad and you need to go to the cabin. Yep. So. I should be halfway through this drive already, but we've completely forgot we had to do an episode. I'm like, have my hamper in my hands with all my folded clothes and a book, mm -hmm. a couple pairs of shoes. And you look at me and you're like, oh shit, mm -hmm. we don't have an episode. Yeah. <laughs> And when Chad comes back, we're flying to Spokane. We're going to go see Red Hot Chili Peppers at the Gorge with Dan Cummins and Lindsay Cummins. So That's right. if you guys are also fans of them, we're going to be going and hopefully have some fun stories when we get back. Oh, man, I'm so excited to hear the three songs I know. You got to do some research. Got to start listening. Oh, man, you probably just dunked your tail in my water. All right, guys. Pretend problems podcast at gmail.com if you would like to write in and get some advice from us, if you want to, you know, give your thoughts on stuff we're talking about. Mm -hmm. And yeah, we'll see you guys next time. Absolutely. More questions next time. More questions next time. Okay, bye.